Welcome everybody to the design management lecture. This is just a quick rough overview of what design management is, where it's positioned in the big scheme of things, and what it is not. I'll talk you through everything. So the first thing is that a lot of people get design management wrong. They have all these different ideas of what design management is. Um, I've put them here next to these tick boxes. Some people think that uh, design managers are leading the designers or um, all kinds of other things. I, I won't confuse you. What it boils down to is this. Design management is a business discipline that occupies itself only with the business side of design. So it is a business discipline, a proper one. <clears throat> and it is used to do these three things here. Most importantly, you use design management in order to develop and maintain a business environment. And that business environment is obviously dedicated to design. You do this because your organization has to achieve its strategic goals through design. And this is how you keep it strategic. And you're also establishing and managing an efficient and effective system in which undoubtedly designers will be at work. So these are the three things that we try to regulate and manage through design management. Many different people have opinions on what a design manager should be doing. And I think most people agree these days that the most recent of these views here is by uh, Borghe de Mosota. And she has outlined these different tasks as key tasks of a uh, design manager. So this is the most recent one from 2003. And Mozota basically says, strategy and planning are part of your job if you're a design manager. You're doing structure, finance, human resources. You're dealing with information and communication. You link to R&D and you link to branding. You may do the project management. <clears throat> you will evaluate what has been done. And so what is the value of design management according to Borghe de Mosota? Borghe de Mosota says, Design management can bring innovation in the internal business processes. That just means if you're going to be running the business side of things as a design manager, perhaps you can yeah, basically rejuvenate that in a way to, to uh, make it yeah, more up to date to everything um, that we value these days. A design manager would also be expected to create learning and growing opportunities for his staff or maybe generally for the staff of the company. So there is, a, there is an educational side here. The design management side is responsible for making sure that whatever design proposals are created are in line with the strategic positioning of the company. So they would need to be in, in, in good know of the company's brand ideals and act accordingly. And interestingly, Mosota says that if you have design management in place, your company's reputation might increase and your stock market performance will be better. So here's, here's some pretty good reasons to have a design manager in your company. There are three key roles of the design management. One is to align design strategy with the corporate and or brand strategy. 
One is to manage the quality and consistency of the design outcomes. So it is true in a way that you will be breathing down the necks of some of your designers and enhance the user experience, create new solutions and differentiate the new products from what the rivals are doing. So when we're looking at this, we're basically saying, if you are aligning the design strategy with corporate or brand strategy, it means that whatever you allow your designers to present to the board of directors will have your approval through the glasses of, does this fit our brand strategy? Let's just take an example. Imagine you're working for BMW, somebody creates an accessory, it's a watch. And the question is, does this watch say BMW or is that a Honda watch, right? Um, when we manage the quality and consistency of the design outcomes, that means the design manager is very much on the shop floor with the designers, um, interfacing with them, making sure things are as they should be. And then all this stuff here boils down to you are, as a design manager, ensuring that what is happening uh, and what is, make, what is made by the designers is actually making a useful difference to the status quo. Here's some <coughs> expert opinions on design management. Peter Gorb said this interesting thing about design management. I'll read it out to you. Design management is the effective deployment by line managers of the design resources available to an organization in the pursuance of its corporate objectives. It is therefore directly concerned with the organizational place of design with the identification with specific design disciplines which are relevant to the resolution of key management issues and with the training of managers to use design effectively. Very nicely put. And it basically means design management helps defend design within the company. Because you have to do that. Somebody needs to stick up for the design department and guess who that is? That is the design manager because not everybody will automatically subscribe joyfully to whatever the design department does. There will be people who have different views, there will be people who will disagree. So the design manager uh, needs to overcome these internal resistances and uh, make sure that the design management, uh, the design department is heard and understood and gets through with its stuff. John Sakara is another interesting person here who says design management is a complex and multifaceted activity that goes right to the heart of what a company is or does. It is not something susceptible to pat formulas, a few bullet points or a manual. Every company's structure and internal culture is different. Design management is no exception, but the fact that every firm is different does not diminish the importance of managing design tightly and effectively. <clears throat> what Thakara means here is simply that if you have a managed design process rather than a wild and crazy one that nobody controls, then this will always benefit any company. So design your design process and you, you will do better whatever company you may have. So how do we distinguish the difference between design management and design leadership? Because there, there does seem to be a high potential to misunderstand something here. I think what we should accept right, right off the bat here is that design management is not the same thing as design leadership. They're two different things, right? And it works like this. Design leadership basically means the design vision management and design management means the design process management. So let's just imagine we are going into a big design company with a big design um, department. There will be two big head honchos in that design department. One is the design leader and one is the design manager. 
Now, the design leader is the one who actually really works with the design staff one-on-one, -on -one, day after day, getting stuck into the projects and really knows what they're actually making there. Whereas the design manager is the guy who would manage the process. So the design manager is the one who responds to the business situations, who might make sure they have a room to work in, who might buy the software licenses, who might find an outsourcing partner, that kind of stuff. The design leader, though, the guy who does the design vision management here at the top, stimulates communication and collaboration among the designers through motivation, sets ambitions, points out future directions to achieve, long-term objectives, blah, blah, blah. But I hope you see the difference between these two, right? The design manager looks after the world outside the design department and makes sure the design department has what it needs. And the design leader works with the designers to do the actual design work properly. And the design manager and the design leader need to communicate with each other nonstop. No, not nonstop, but definitely need to be in touch with each other so that they both know what the other is doing. Some people say design management has four different pillars that it stands on, and they are these four here. Project management, design, of course, strategy, and supply chain techniques. Let's uh, take a look at these things. Project management does a few very good things. It helps to achieve project goals logically, otherwise we wouldn't have it. And that means project management looks at time management, the scope of activity that is covered, the budget, meaning the money that we've got to do this with this project, and the quality, which means uh, the evaluation of what has been done, evaluation of processes and perhaps of people. There are some interesting people who started to manage projects in a more professional way. The first record that we have is by a Roman architect named Vitruvius. And this is pretty old. This is from the first century AD. So this is almost 2000 years ago. And it shouldn't surprise us because people have been making uh, things and conducting complex projects for thousands of years. So someone must have had a more complex way of uh, thinking about this. And Vitruvius uh, was one of those who, whose, whose writings um, are still left over to this day. Henry Gant was a more recent one, and you may know his name because he is the man who invented the Gantt chart. Things um, really took off in the 20th century with a lot of military activity and uh, the US Navy was one place where in the 1950s somebody came up with a slightly more complex way to do project management. This is the so-called BERT network chart. This part here this back and forth part is actually happening in a helix. And what they mean by that is, of course, the project goes through the helix, uh, it walks its way here through all the windings. But when the communication happens, like the back and forth between the different uh, yeah, actors in the game, then you, you can see here that you have a nice layered, um, yeah, almost like a staircase where people are shouting at each other across the different stories of the project, if you will. Um, this is just a, just a summary of all the different management tools that you can use. And this is it. So, okay, you've seen this before, and this is basically what project management boils down to. If you know that one, then you've got the basics. 
What other four pillars of design management do we have? We've already looked at project management. Now we're looking at design. Do we know what design is? Come on, guys. You're design students, I imagine. Here's a definition that I dug up somewhere, who knows where, but I find it very, very fitting. Design is a specification of an object manifested by an agent intended to accomplish goals in a particular environment using a set of primitive components satisfying a set of requirements subject to constraints. Brilliant. I couldn't think of a better way to say what design really is. And it's this, okay? So since we've clarified what design is, <laughs> um, let's move on to strategy. Strategy is another thing the design manager needs to understand. Strategy was originally uh, formulated as the art of troop leadership or the office of general command generalship by the Greeks. So what is is a, a high level plan to achieve one or more goals under conditions of uncertainty. So that means we, we know what we might do, we just don't know what kind of situation we're going to be in. And that describes exactly what goes on um, when you're yeah designing something because you really are in uncertain conditions and you have to have a pretty good plan forward. So the Chandler definition of a management context is the determination of the basic long-term goals and objectives of an enterprise and the adoption of courses of action and the allocation of resources necessary for carrying out these goals. So we're saying a manager sets goals, has methods, and finds means, meaning money, and tools and people and processes. And then fourth, we've got the supply chain techniques. You might be surprised to hear that word here because uh, a lot of people associate supply chain with trade or retail or something like that. The thing is though, you need to have a supply chain of organizations people, technology, activities, information and resources involved in the whole thing to be able to organize. So supply chain means everything and everyone involved in a process is linked and orchestrated in some way. There is surprisingly also a role that we designers have within the supply chain that goes on in industry. One is we generate demand. How do we generate demand, do you think? Well, in a way, we create desirable things. So that creates a pull. And um, if somebody wants it, you have demand, right? So you create demand as a designer by creating something people want. Simple as that. Um, this will have an influence on manufacturing processes, on the cost of manufacturing, perhaps on the quality of manufacturing, and on the lead time required to get stuff done. And you as a design manager need to be very aware of these things. So if uh, your designers are putting forward a proposal for something, Maybe we need new machines for the new manufacturing processes. There will be money required, so the cost is affected. Uh, the cost of the product may be different, how higher, lower. Uh, might have better quality, hopefully. And um, you will need to be the one who tells everybody else what the lead time might be to create something like that. So. We have an effect on manufacturing, transportation, quality, quantity, production schedule, material selection, production technologies, production policies, regulations, 
perhaps even laws. So the success of the design is very much dependent on the supply chain and your ability as a design manager to position what your team does within that. Let's uh, look at the history of design management for a moment. Here is a man, an architect, Peter Behrens of Berlin, who is commonly considered the world's first industrial designer. He created the corporate identity of AEG, a big company in Germany. And that actually impressed a lot of other stakeholders. They are not stakeholders, but a lot of other players in that game. So all these names that you see here uh, got involved in this as well and all created their own views and uh, publications on the subject of design management. So design management as a word wasn't really known until about 1910 when Peter Behrens came up with it. But then came the Bauhaus, the British Design Council, Deutsche Werkbund, Olivetti and uh, Walter or Walter Pepke. This is uh, the building that AEG is still using. The Bauhaus you might be familiar with. This was their famous location. British Design Council. Backbund no longer exists. Olivetti was um, the company associated with the famous designer Ettore Sozzas. Here's the man Peter Behrens we've seen before. And Walter Pepke actually had his own institute and did a lot of writing on the subject of design management. So you might find his stuff in the libraries. As a design manager, you are familiar with and responsible for the intellectual property side. If an invention is made, if intellectual property stuff or capability stuff is, is created, you need to be the one who flags that up and says, right, here, patent application, design patent, whatever. Just to remind you what these different types of intellectual property are that we can get. You can get a patent, which is the king of protection. It gives the inventor the exclusive right to make, use, sell, and import an invention for a limited period of time. It also means that the invention is going to be publicly disclosed and everybody can read up on it. You can not keep anything secret. If you're getting a patent, then that means everybody can get full access to how this thing is made. And it's okay because it's yours, your name is uh, associated with it, so you are the inventor and have the exclusive rights. And you can protect a product or a process as a patent. Copyright is a different thing. A copyright also gives you the exclusive rights if you are the creator of it but it is much more suitable for creative, intellectual or artistic work. And it does not cover ideas. It only covers the form or manner in which something is expressed. So if you know Calvin and Hobbes, for example, we cannot get a patent on Calvin and Hobbes because both little boys and stuffed tigers have been perfectly known to mankind for a long, long time. So you can get a copyright and that will protect that recognizable character, Calvin, the boy, and Hobbes, the tiger, the way they look. But it doesn't mean that little boys and tigers can only be drawn by you from you on. Okay. There's this thing which is confusingly named. It's the industrial design right. It's not an industrial design right it's an industrial design right and that means it is 
an aspect of a product that may or may not be three-dimensional, but it is closely associated with it. I'm showing the three stripes of the Adidas shoe here. That is something the company Adidas has a design right on. Trademarks are readily recognizable signs, designs, or expressions um, that are used to identify a product or service. I'm using a Coke bottle here to give you a particular example, like that shape of the bottle, that's a trademark, or the, the writing Coca-Cola as well. There are trade dresses out there, which is a slightly different thing. A trade dress is basically a label that attests to a certain quality or affiliation of a product. And uh, it's basically a, a sticker, it's a graphic design, which you can choose to buy uh, into, you know, if, you, if you're marketing a product and uh, display that prominently on all your products to say, okay, this has been endorsed by such and such. This sticker here is um, a trade dress for the American Organic Food Association. That is a trade dress. So if you're buying organic milk in America, it may have that on it, and you may be looking for that because it means it's the real McCoy. And then you have this amusing thing, the trade secret. The trade secret is funny because um, I think it's probably the best way to protect your stuff unless it can be easily uh, analyzed. Um, let's look at KFC here as an example. Nobody knows how the chicken coating recipe of KFC actually, yeah, well, what's in there? Yeah, nobody knows it because KFC is keeping that as a trade secret and they're obviously not applying for a patent for it. Of course they could, but they're not doing that because if they're going to apply for a patent for it, <clears throat> then the protection is only going to be limited to about 16 to 20 years and everybody will know what's in that. So that basically means is the, the minute you apply for a patent for your KFC chicken coating, you, you can set your timer. 20 years down the road, this is it for KFC. Everybody will be able to make KFC chicken coating then. But they haven't done that. They've chosen to keep it a trade secret. So it will be theirs as long as they can keep the secret. And that is why you may want to be very careful about um, whether you want a patent or not. And that concludes that. I realize there are many other aspects to design management that require looking at, but I think I've given you a reasonable overview of what is out there. So all the best in your projects.